Today we're getting our crinkle on. We're making peppermint chocolate crinkle cookies. You ever had them? Well, these cookies are usually around the holidays, you'll see them, and they have a nice little lightly crispy exterior because of the sugar, and the inside is nice chocolatey, fudgy, and light. You're gonna love these. Now these are gluten-free, they're covered in powdered sugar, but I'm also gonna show you how to get the best crinkle in your cookie because I got a little hack for you. So I'm Rockin' Robin, and I'm gonna show you how to do it right after my chef joke. Okay, so I'd like to start off with chef joke number one right now, and number two will be a little bit later, so stay tuned for that. All right, here we go. So this is for all you Star Trek fans out there. Just a little hint. What did the intergalactic cookie say to the other intergalactic cookie? Beam me up, biscotti. <laughs> all right, so let's go over our ingredients. First up is our uh, almond flour that we're gonna be using, and it is a super fine grind so that the texture is really nice for your cookie. We have some cocoa powder, and you can use any kind you like. This is what I'm using today. So we're gonna be using coconut sugar today to keep the glycemic index a little bit lower. We'll need an egg. I have some peppermint extract along with some vanilla extract. We'll have some uh, unsweetened apple sauce. I have some butter here, and I'm gonna show you a little hack on how you can soften your butter pretty quickly and easily uh, without using the microwave. Here I have some baking powder and baking soda, some salt, and to coat these cookies, I'm gonna show you how to use regular sugar and powdered sugar to get that nice crinkle. That's my little hack. So first I'm gonna show you my little hack on how to soften the butter. So what you wanna do is just fill a pot with some water, place it on the stove, and bring that to a boil. Once the water comes to a boil, We'll turn off the heat, and I'm gonna pour this water into my mason jar here. I like to use a mason jar just because I know it can handle the heat. I'm gonna let that sit for about a minute, and then I'm gonna pour it out. Now I like to take a paper towel and just kind of wipe the inside out just a little bit so it's not dripping onto my butter. Take the glass, place it over the butter, and let it sit for maybe four or five minutes or until it looks like it's softened. So it's been about four minutes here on the butter. It just gets it nice and soft, but not too much. Make it easier to blend in uh, that with the coconut sugar. So I'm gonna add the coconut sugar to that. And we'll use a mi mixer and blend it up. Next, I'm gonna add the applesauce. And you can get the written recipe down below in the description of this video. I'm gonna add a little bit of vanilla extract to that and some peppermint extract. You can always leave out the peppermint extract if you just want chocolate. Next goes our egg. So mix this until the egg is well incorporated. Be sure and use a spatula to scrape down the sides of the bowl. To our almond flour, we want to just add the other dry ingredients to that and combine them, which is the baking soda and the baking powder. So I'm going to toss that in with the salt and just take a whisk and combine that. Now we're going to add the cocoa powder, but we want to, we want to add that through a sieve so that it, there's no lumps. So I'm going to just shake that through. And you can use your fingers to push it through a little bit to help it go a little quicker. Now we'll mix this up until it's all combined. And be sure to scrape down the edges periodically. Now we'll add the flour. I'm gonna add um, the flour, about half of it, and then I'll mix it up. Continue to beat this in until the flour is just incorporated. Here goes the second half of the flour, and we'll beat that in as well until it's just mixed in. And make sure to scrape down the bowl just to make sure all the flour is mixed in. Now you can see the batter is very soft. So we'll place this into a dish, and we're gonna put this in the freezer. You're gonna wanna freeze this probably for about two hours or until this firms up, and you can actually scoop it out with a scooper. Put a tight-fitting lid on this, pop it in the freezer, and it'll keep for up to about three months. Now, I made some dough last night, so I'd have it ready for this video. And it's been in the freezer overnight, and it's probably gonna be a little too hard as it is, so we're gonna have to let that sit for just, you know, maybe five minutes so that we can actually scoop it out and form little balls. So I've got me a nice little scooper here that you can see. 
and it just makes it a lot easier. It's starting to soften up now. And it will start to soften up pretty darn quick. So you wanna, and it's messy, okay? I'm not gonna kid you. So make some balls, you know, like a golf ball size. Now the hack is that I learned from, I think it was America's Test Kitchen or it was Cook's Illustrated, is you roll your balls in regular granulated sugar first, and that keeps the powdered sugar from absorbing in too quickly and just kind of disappearing. One little roll of granulated sugar and just lay on the powdered sugar. Make it nice and thick and place your ball right there on your, on your parchment covered baking sheet. Get the cookies all coated and we'll place this in a 350 degree Fahrenheit oven for about 12 to 14 minutes. Cookies are baking, so it must be time for chef joke number two. Here we go. How do you make a gingerbread man's bed? With a cookie sheet. I checked the cookies at 12 minutes and they, because they were a little bit bigger than I normally make them, uh, they needed another couple minutes. So I put them in for another two and so they stayed in there for 14. Let's give them a taste, shall we? Wow. They're so light, they're like a cloud. It's like a cloud of chocolate. You get a little bit of crispy edge. They are a little bit crumbly, so be aware of that. They just melt in your mouth. Mmm, a nice minty flavor too. After the cookies cool for about 10 minutes in the baking sheet, transfer them to a wire rack to cool completely. You can freeze the cookie dough if you don't want to bake it all at the same time. If peppermint is your thing, you're going to want to try my peppermint bark, especially for the holidays. It is a delicious tradition in my family, and I think you'll really enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching today. If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll know when new videos come out. If you enjoyed today's video, smash the like button for me and leave me a comment. I always enjoy hearing from you. Okay, we'll see you next time for another rockin' recipe.